telling Paul to Timothy, I want you to go and I want you to tell everything that you know about Jesus. I want you to be ready. I want you to be spiritual about the way you live your life. And third, by immersing yourself, you'll be able to identify what's good and what's bad. How's that for some advice? Not bad for somebody who's in a hole. Do you hear, do you see anything or read anything of, of complaints? No, there's not. Because he says you should finish strong because you should refuse to compromise who you are. You should be a follower of Christ no matter what. You should do what Christ wants you to do because this is what I have done. Don't ever compromise who you are. Be who God wants you to be. Resolve to live with humility and contentment. Humility and contentment. Always be content of where you are. You can't do anything about yesterday. You cannot do anything about the future. Be happy right now. Be content. And don't go around. Hey, Linda, I'm the best looking man you'll ever see on this planet, so look at me. That never gets you anywhere. If you go about living your life for God and others can see God working through you, that is one of the best things you can ever do in your life. Not only that, renew. Does everybody understand what renew means? Anybody not know what renew means? Refresh. Refresh. <coughs> It's like me on a cruise boat. I've never taken so many showers in a week because I want to smell good. I don't go want don't want to go around and smell bad. I want to be refreshed, and that's what Paul's telling us that we should do. Also, on a daily basis, we need on a daily basis to re refresh our spirit daily. Not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays, not just on Saturdays, but every single day. You'll never know who God is if you only look at Him on Sundays. If you never open the Bibles that we give you, except on Sundays, you'll never know who He is. And it's kind of cool because the more you read, the more you want to know. It's just like... The more I see Wenda and the cool things that she does, I want to know how she does it. Didn't I ask you that about the Insta frame? I said, how did you do that? That was the coolest thing. Now i got to do it. And that's what about God's Word is too. You do something and you go, hey, I want to know. And you just share. And that's what Paul's telling us on a daily basis. And I love his advice to us. Don't love on someone else. You're the only person that can develop a relationship with God. I can't do it for you or I would have. You are the only one. This is the saddest word I've ever seen in my entire life. And I boohooed when I typed that into the computer. These are the last words of our whole series on Paul. And what can we really say from the life of Paul? Refresh. In other words, renew through God's Word. Be a Berean. We know that through the study, our study of Paul, that when he was in Berea, what did those people do? They encouraged each other and they studied. They wanted to know more. And that's what we should do on a daily basis. We should want to renew ourselves. Second thing, renew yourself through fellowship. Linda will never know how good of a person I am in if she never talks to me. I'll never know how smart the twins are if I never talk to them. <laughs> I won't. You have to take the initiative to be around those people and get to know them. That's why I think cruises are so much fun because guess what? You can't escape me for a week. <laughs> You have to see me. 
and then you have to hear Terry Mom, which is a good thing, <laughs> because I have proof. Renew yourself through, and this is the hardest thing that people don't do on a daily basis. They don't thank God every day. I mean, yesterday I felt awful. I gave us a three-hour detour. And it's my fault. But we still made it. Amen. We still made it. And that's all that matters. And this is what Paul wants to do. And when I, when I, when I studied this, and I went, this is what really Paul wants in our lives. He wants us to focus upon eternity. He always talked about Christ crucified. You cannot go to heaven unless you accept Jesus as your personal Savior. And if you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you can focus upon heaven. Because guess what? That's where we're all going to go if we accept Jesus. And let me tell you, the food might be a little bit better now. Second thing, Focus upon Jesus Christ and how He wants you to live. Paul talked over and over and over again. Christ crucified. Follow His example. Christ crucified. Follow His example. That's what He wants us to do today. Focus upon Jesus and how He wants you to live. And He wants you to focus on your eternal home. Your eternal home in heaven will be beyond what I can even comprehend. And trust me, in Jamaica, I kind of like that house on the hill. Those of you that zip line, you miss the house. The house is beautiful, but it, it will not even stand into comparison of what your home in heaven will be like once you accept Jesus. And last but not least, how do you sustain it all? How do you sustain this kind of life that Paul wants us to live in our life? And I came up with this sentence. You may understand it. You may not. It makes sense to me because I'm left-handed. The key to endurance is your perspective. The key to living your life in Christ is your perspective or how you see things. And in other words, when you figure out why you do what you do, you will achieve more. And that's what Paul wants us to do. He wants to break, he wants us to break down everything that keeps us from focusing upon Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And the final scripture I'm going to read is verse 9. And in verse 9, it's awesome. When you look at verse 9 of 2 Timothy, Timothy 4 9, it says, Be diligent to come to me quickly. And that's how our attitude should be toward our personal relationship with God. We should want to be coming to Him as quickly as possible. And that's the series on the life of Paul. Thank you.